Well, hello there, everybody. Um, gonna do a little painting here. Hope you paint along with me. I'm Dale, Dale Cullen Art. We're gonna do a little painting tonight um, called River Dragon. River Dragon, right here. Of course, this one won't be called River Dragon. It has to have its own name, but I haven't come up with one yet. But um, it's not going to be an exact copy. And yeah, that's all right. Every painting needs to be unique. Every one. So, let me tell you how I got prepared here. I have a black canvas. I just start off with a white canvas. And I covered it in uh, two coats of gesso. And I've let that completely dry. I then covered the entire canvas with uh, a clear medium. I like to use linseed oil. If you like liquid clear or liquid first coat clear or a little bottle that says oil painting medium. As long as it's clear, that's cool. Use what you like. I like refined linseed oil. Um, so I covered it in that. Then I took a paper towel and I wiped it. And that left exactly the amount of medium that I needed on the canvas. Then I covered the entire canvas in alizarin crimson and then decided where I wanted my horizon to be. And I took a paper towel and I wiped the alizarin crimson right out. And with that, um, oh, let me tell you what I have on my palette. Let's see, let me get a little pointer here. There we are. Um, on my palette, I have titanium white, um, medium yellow, Yellow ochre, which I may or may not use. I haven't really decided. It depends. Um, I have orange. I have permanent red. Uh, burnt sienna. Not going not gonna to use a whole lot of burnt sienna right here. Um, black. And right here, alizarin crimson. And um, I've already... I think I've used all the alizarin crimson I'm going to use, so... With that, let's get started. So I know where my horizon is. So I'm gonna load up a fan brush with some um, permanent red. Permanent red. Oh, one thing I didn't set out and uh, I'm gonna need because you will become an expert paint brush washer with this paint. An expert, I'm telling you. So give me just a second here. I've got my odorless paint thinner in a container. It's got a little screen in the bottom and it's got a lid on it. So I'll just set that over there. So my fan brush loaded up with uh, permanent red. And I'm going to start right here where I want the lightest part to be. And I am just going to make a mark here. That's where I want to be. I'm just going to like make little cloud shapes going out. And it doesn't matter. I mean, just turn that brush. Let that brush dance. It doesn't matter how, how you get it on there. Just get it on there. Don't let it sit still. Whirl and twirl and bam. You know what? I think that light right there may... I don't know if it'll help or not. I don't want to aim it right at my phone. It's just me and my phone and my easel. Yeah, let's just turn it off. If I can find off. Come on. There we go. All right. So, there, it's on there now. I'm going to do some more little cloud shapes. Okay. Now I'm picking up a lot of that alizarin crimson. Yeah, and they're both reds, but one's a cool red, one's a warm red. And I'm picking up a lot of that, so I'm going to wipe out my fan brush with a paper towel. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean this brush in my odorless paint thinner. 
like I said, you will be an expert paintbrush washer when this is over. Bob had a lot of paintings like that. And he'd tell you straight up, same thing. You will be an expert paintbrush washer. So let's uh, pick up some more of that. I want some more right here. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. I'm gonna wash my brush. Sure I am. There we go. I'm gonna wash my brush. There we are. Dry it off, because you do not want to take that paint thinner up there onto your canvas. It'll lift the paint right off. So dry it out. Now I'm gonna pick up some of this orange but before I put the orange up there, I'm gonna take a paper towel. Go right here. There we go. And there's still some crimson underneath there. Believe me. Okay, now I'm gonna go with some orange and just do the same thing. Let that orange mix and play and dance and just have a good old time. Clean that brush again. Dry it off. You don't want to take this dark color back to the center and contaminate that center. Okay, and wherever you think you need a cloud shape, by golly, that's right where it needs to be. And it kind of looks a little bit like a mess, but it'll be okay. that orange same orange I'm gonna come right down here right below that line that I made um, where I took the crimson off right below that and I'm just gonna put some color in Clean the brush yet again. Dry that baby off, and now uh, get some more paper towels. And what now we're gonna do? I'm gonna go right back up here and I'm gonna lift some of that paint off. It's still there. It's still stained the canvas, but that's all right. We're fine. Now, I got my yellow, medium yellow. Right in there. Right there at the brightest spot. Maybe there's some little things happening way up here. Wash that brush off. Go back into the yellow. And just do that right there again. Wherever you think you need it. some more yellow but this time I'm going to add some titanium white to it 
going with a lighter color now. And this is going to be right there in that bright spot. Just want to brighten up somebody's day there. Brighten that up. And we're going to do it again. Do it again. Some white, some yellow. Mix it all up right there on your brush. Loading up again, yellow and white, white and yellow. They're a bright day's best friend. Let's go back down here to our river. Get us some of the yellow. Get us some of this yellow and white. A little bit heavier on the white, maybe. Let's see. I just wiped off my brush and came up here to kind of just blend that back and forth. All right. Now, I need to figure out my shoreline. And I have an itch on my back. Okay, I need to figure out my shoreline. And since this is going to be a river, I want it to go small here and come out. Small, out. So, I don't know. Let's kind of try and trace that out a little bit. There we go, small. I almost can't see that. Got a little bit of yellow with it. Okay. Now, I'm going to take me a one-inch brush here. I like this one-inch brush. I bought this at a paint store. You know, like a Sherwin-Williams, a home painting store. House painting. 
and I uh, just told them I needed a natural bristle, a one-inch brush. They had them. They can be hard to find. You're not going to find them at Lowe's and Home Depot. At least I never did. Okay, now all I'm doing is I'm starting here in the center, and I'm working my way out. And I'm just making little circular patterns. And when I do it, I'm not even... I'm not even taking the bristles off the canvas. I'm kind of like this motion right here with the top bristles just staying in contact with the canvas. So I'm just blending out the bottom of these clouds here. You'll be picking up color, so just wipe wipe it off on a paper towel, the excess color. Just paper towel, wipe it off. Now, don't take this dark color back into your light area. If you need to go back into that light area, make sure that you clean your brush and dry it completely. You do not, absolutely do not want to be bringing paint thinner into your, into your painting. It is not good. I have done it. Now out here, I don't really mind too much if the colors blend a little. Well, I don't, I actually want them to blend but in this light area I don't want that dark getting in there so I'm gonna clean my brush and the odorless paint thinner I rearranged things and lost my beater rack there for a second should be able to go back in here. And just any little spots that you see that you think need blended. Now, you still kind of want to keep the shapes up here at the top at the top of your clouds. The bottom of the clouds, they fuzz out, but the tops usually have the definition to them. There we go. I'm okay with that. Now, down here, that I feel like needs to be lighter back in that area. So... I got some crimson or red or something on that brush. And get it off there. there we are. So back here, I'm going to grab some of the titanium white and medium yellow. Heavier on the white. Oh, 
I'm trying. Now, I must have a drink. Ah, root beer. My favorite. I love root beer. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to pick up some black. I don't know what this would turn out like, but let's add some red to it. Because black on its own is kind of dead. So, I added some red. Now, let me show you here what I'm doing. I'm pulling straight down. Straight down one direction. Now, when I get done, my brush has a heel and a toe. I put toe down. Toe down. And I'm going to start adding some a tree line. now we have our tree line in we need to kind of highlight those trees a little bit just a little um, and to do that I'm going to kind of try to hang on one second I see something so that'll happen while you're painting you'll see something go wait a second Okay, that wasn't blended in. Sorry, it was bothering me. Okay, um, so I'm going to try and take some of the colors of the sky and just do some very, very small, tiny highlights um, on those trees. I'm gonna load my brush the same way. I'm going into some uh, orange and the medium yellow. And I think that might wind up being a little too light. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Put a little bit of gold in that. There we go. Now, I'm just going to lightly touch... And you'll be picking up some of that dark color. Now, if your paint won't stick, add just a drop. I mean, like a microscopic drop of paint thinner.
Alright, so let's wipe off the dirty part that are just on the tips. Okay, let's do this again over on the other side. We don't want them left out. All I'm doing, I'm just, just um, smashing my brush in here. If I said to do it the same way for the highlights, yeah, I tried that. It didn't really work for me. So now what I'm doing is I'm trying to get those bristles open and the paint in there. And now I'm just going up here and with the top part right here, I'm just kind of touching. Don't kill all your darks, though. That's your shadows. I really don't want to do too much with the foreground because um, this is our this is our star. This is our attraction right here. I'm just adding in a little bit of land in front of these trees. And all I'm using is a mixture of uh, the orange and the red. Sometimes as you go along with the painting, you find you, you start developing this uh, other idea, um, and I think I'm going to go with it. So this is, although it's the same theme as this uh, original of the River Dragon, I'm going to do something a little bit different here. <laughs> so we definitely have to come up with a different name for it. Definitely. Sorry, I was just blending that out. Sometimes I start thinking about a painting and <laughs> it's like all I can think about. Okay, let's uh, move on and um, see here what we can do. Let's sit back and take a look at this for a second. take my liner brush and I'm going to go into some paint thinner and I'm going to thin down that uh, red and black we used to make the
tree line. I'm going to thin that down. Now your liner brush is made to be used wet. So make sure it's wet. Thin that paint down. And I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to add in a few little twigs and branches and maybe, you know, just something to give it a little bit of interest. Yeah, maybe something. Okay, it's black canvas. I hope stuff's showing up for you. All I'm doing is just adding a few little, few little uh, like dead limbs and stuff, and maybe some sticks sticking up, and a little tree, dead tree or something. Okay, just whatever you want to put in there. I mean, it's your painting, right? So put what you want in there. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's your world. It's your world. Okay, maybe right here. Got a little... Like that. Right there, we got us a little tree going up there. detail in this it's dark shadows of hidden shouldn't say no detail might add just a little bit of highlight just on the front not much not much That's good for now and let's go ahead and add us in a little bit of land and for that I am going to take that yeah, that looks like a good fan brush I'm going to take some um, of the red and black that we mixed up some of that and I'm going to add some burnt sienna to it mix that up Make us a little bit of a darker color. And then I'm just going to go in here. And I'm just going to scrub this in. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. two colors meet. I'm just going to pull that color back into it. There we go. Kind of blend them together. Take some burnt sienna, some orange, and just a tiny little touch of white. I'm going to get a little roll on the end of my knife here. I'm just going to kind of just Scrub in.
Almost like a water line, if you know what I mean. There we are. Now, let's take a little bit of white. A little bit of white. A little yellow. A little orange. And, um... Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it. Never mind. Just kidding. All right. Now... Where'd my black go? I need more black. I ran out. I ran out. Let's see. I know I've got it here. I threw all the paints that I used right up here. And apparently all except for black because I do not see it. All right. Well, when all else fails, get more. This black and what if we had an old tree limb? Going right off the canvas. See, this is what I was saying about, you know sitting there and you think you have a plan for your painting and then something else comes up and it's like you know what I think I want to paint that that's okay there's nothing wrong with that I said go for it and so I'm just going to put us in a little And make sure that your tree limbs are and trees are fatter on the bottom than on the top. There we go. All right. Now let's go ahead and thin some of that stuff down. Let's make a few more branches out here. There we go. Let's go up here. And maybe here. Cool. Coolies. I'm going to take the burnt sienna and a little bit of orange. Burnt sienna is actually, I mean, it's brown, but it's got a lot of orange in it already. And maybe just a dab of white. Okay, and I'm going to pull that out flat. I'm going to get a roll of uh, paint right there on the knife. And I am just going to add this tree in. Put a little bit of color here. Just touch and move. Let the uh, canvas take what it wants, and it'll give you back what it doesn't. All I'm doing is I'm just touching and moving, touching and moving. Reloading as necessary. Okay. I got a dark side on. Now what I'm going to do is the same thing, but a little bit lighter. 
same colors, a little bit lighter over here on this other side of the tree. Tell you what, I love painting these black canvases. And the first time I ever saw Bob do one, he's like, "Yeah, paint black canvases. Yeah, you'll, you're gonna love it." And I started off, and I was like, "I don't love it." <laughs> but then I started learning a little bit about how to do what I wanted to do with them. Man, you can get all kinds of cool effects. You know what, I think I want a little bit of, well, let's see what yellow ochre looks like on it. I'm just taking some, smashing it out, pulling it out, getting a rolling, nice little roll right there. Let's see, what does yellow ochre do to it? Keep it clean, keep it clean. Okay. Yeah, I think yellow ochre was the right choice here. Started off, didn't know if I was going to use it or not. But that's why I keep the paints close by. <laughs> I have been known to change my mind midstream. point and let's sign this bad boy all right so there you have it What do we call that one? River Dragon 2? I don't know. I'm sure a name will come to me, though. Until then, hey, I will catch you on the next one. Next one we'll be doing um, is called, well, the original is called Cool Change. So I'll be looking forward to doing that one with you. All right, everybody, take care. Peace.